Welcome, this is Melinda Barlow, CZT Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to our live Zoom class. Again, it is, you know, I think this um, coronavirus has its, it's definitely not good, but it's opened a world of new things for a lot of people, and we just kind of have to count our blessings where we can find them. And so that's hence today, happiness. Happiness is a state of mind. It's, it is in the way you look at things. And so we kind of have to go there because there's not a lot of things we can change. And so that's why I chose this template out of my book. So this is out of the book. This is what I drew out of the book. And I actually drew it in the book. I also printed it and I, have a blank one that I have printed on and when I printed this one and I was doing it in my book I noticed that this tangle was a little light um, in my book it's it I don't know if when it when it came on the printer it just got a, a little different printing so I ended up going over this tangle with my pen just redoing it to make it darker so I am going to start and I am going to um, tangle on a tile. I'm gonna start it on a tile and then I'm gonna move it over to my template. Just so that those who don't have the template and they just have paper and a pen, they, they won't feel like they're being left out. So I, um, I usually start on my, um, my tile with dots in the corners and a border. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And and typically I have my fingers here and I draw around my fingers. <laughs> so usually when I do a tile, I always have one side that's really wiggly because I go around it. And I've looked at several and a lot of them have a real bump out where I put my finger. And I'm gonna start with, um, Lava, but you know, no, I, I take that back. I'm going to start with Apicor because I, um, I will probably put it in here on this line. So we'll start teaching with Apicor and I'm just going to start it down in one corner. I'm not going to um, do a string in here. I'm just going to start Apicor down here in the corner and um, I start it a lot like fescue. So I looked at the step outs and that was a lot like, and so I make this little kind of a fescue stroke and it kind of, mine kind of sometimes bend over. And then I'm gonna come up and do like a little heart shape so that I end up with two together and I come back up in the center so I do a straight one that comes down because I have a hard time with my first one making that straight I don't know it's that fescue in me and then I'm going to come and make another one and so they kind of have this seed end. I'm gonna come in so you can see it a little bit better. There. It kind of has the look of a little blossom. And I think that's where the name Apicor came from, is like apple core. If you've ever cut an apple um, in half between the stem and the blossom, you see that little blossom? Well, it needs one more because ap apples have five little blossoms. So I'm gonna put one more that comes up this way, up all the way from the top and then in. And I, on um, Lori's uh, step outs, she leaves them blank, you know, so these are open. But when I do them, I almost always color these little seeds 
these little blossom parts in just because I want a a little drama in my tangle and so usually I will do them right as I make them I color that in just so I can see that little blossom maybe just a little bit better and then we come down and we make just these little step down strokes she does it on one side I come back and it all depends on where I put it I sometimes come back and make them on two strokes on two sides it's just happens to see you know what am I where am I placing this tangle and I love organic tangles I love 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 them I was reading somebody's blog and I don't remember who it was and they said they didn't like organic tangles and um, they had just done that one that was really it was really beautiful and she said I just don't like organic tangles and I think we're all so different that is such a blessing isn't it that we're all different that we like different things so now I'm going to add another one here just nestle it into here so I'm going to do the little tangle then I'm going to come back up and do the heart shape that kind of helps me know that you know where give me a balance and then I come up and do one that's straight this time I'm not going to color this one in and we'll see what how it looks when I'm all finished and you can either go on the right side or if you can come up on the left side I'm gonna come again on the right side up and then right down in the center so I get that little little blossom look that's in the center and then just aura or echo and I'm gonna again go on both sides just because I you know I just like how that kind of fills up the tangle the page so now if I were to put it on my template I would come right in here and I would go up and I think I'm only gonna do that little step down I think only on one side right now I think I'm going to leave this one open and um, and just see what happens but that's how what I would do I would just start right up this line that's already on there and I'm gonna work my organic tangles just right up this line so that is app a core and I, I think it's beautiful and I could just keep filling this little baby in I'm gonna do one more since we've got a little time so you can see that that is just and it, leaving it the center not um, not filled in gives you room to if you decide you want to add some color to your um, tangle so the next one and I might add more here we'll see I, I'm not sure I hope I'm going slow enough today so I really have thought about it and watched the time so that we you know can go slower it's perfect oh thank you thank you thank you <laughs> It's, it's hard when you draw a lot and I draw almost every single day and and I practice I do practice the tangles before I teach them because I I have to think about how how do I describe why I do the what I do and this one I should tell you that when I shade this one there's been I sometimes shade down here in the bottom and I'm just gonna do a little shading right now just down here with my graphite pencil and um, 
then I will take my shading stamp and blend up. And that's why sometimes I will use color because I think color just is fun in here. Or you can take it and just put a little graphite. Oh, I need to sharpen my pencil. It's not very up here near the blossom end. And pull it out and down. So you get just a little bit different, you know, look to it. So the next one we're going to do is, I think this is a Akin to one, two, three, when I like to put little tangles in things, and it's lava. I, matter of fact, I should have had my granddaughter do her little ukulele singing for me. What's that song, Sadie, that you sing that's lava? Gotta push your space bar, Sadie, so you can talk. No, she's not, she's not oh, there. Yeah. What, again, Sadie, do it again. Do the song? No, just tell me the name of it. It's called Lava. <laughs> it's called Lava. <laughs> and she has a beautiful voice and she plays the ukulele. And since there have been coronavirus, she has practiced and practiced and practiced. And her ukulele is absolutely beautiful. So we're going to do Lava. And it is so simple. It is, we're going to start out with the heart. And I'm just going to nestle that heart right in the apicor. And so I just have one little small little heart. But the key to this one is that the next one I do kind of follows in the line. So it kind of lays in there. It kind of nestles into that space. So if I'm going to do one here, they kind of just nestle into that space. So they're all kind of different sizes. So I'm gonna come up here to this area so you can see what I mean when I mean nestle it. Cause I'm going to put it, so it, you can see that I kind of even laid it on its little side. And I love how they kind of lay down and they, they're kind of like little, little heart leaves 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 that and some of them even will come in but the I think the key to this one is these three little strokes and so I'm going to come in really close so you can see I she does three little strokes down here in the little end of the the um, heart shape so it I don't know it gives it when I did that I thought that really added to what I was seeing in her tangle and oh I think I was off the camera there when I was doing it so it can just nestle in and uh, it just so they can be a little larger. And sometimes I will just go ahead and put those little three little strokes in when I, um, right after I do it so that, you know, I can decide how, how much am I going to put in here? And they, they're, so they're kind of a misshapen little, I don't know if they're misshapen little hearts, but they're not perfect. They, they kind of just nestle in. And it's just another great thing. I, I love to put um, orbs in into tangles, but I also love, love you know, some kind of little leaf or um, that kind of, you know, it just has this organic look to it. So I'm just going, going ahead and just nestle some of these in just around my little tangle. And they're great to go up a, a little vine 
you know if you've got a little line that you're going up and if you sometimes I will even draw a line on my tile with my pencil so I just drew a little line and then I can it just kind of helps me give that little organic you know look and how they kind of just bend over and they you know they start not looking like hearts they look like lava <laughs> just but it's it's a great little tangle that you know you can just layer up and let it just fill in spaces because you can just make that little heart shape just fill in about anywhere And I, I just, I just think this one is just, just so much, I don't know, you just get a lot of joy out of it. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some little orbs in between my spaces, just because I sometimes, I like to, to crowd things up a little bit sometimes just to give it that, I don't know to me that kind of adds to the fun of Zentangle and especially if I've got one that I've already done and are like I'm working off of this template and it's already there and I want to just add to it I would just come in here and add some little orbs in there just to make it so it connects to it, each other so the one I didn't give you on your um, handout is this one that's called um, Mooka flower and when it was first done it she she drew a circle in the center and then she drew her petals out but I found that I just like the this the one little part of it so I'm just going to do a Mooka flower right here coming off of this stem and we're gonna draw Mooka and we're gonna do Maria's Mooka which has that big end. I, and then I'm gonna do another of Maria's mukas that kind of over, you know, it kind of has that holly bar effect, so it's drawing under. And then we just put little lines that go down in the center. And that's all that one is. So I'm going to do it again. We're going to come up. And then I come, mine came right down and joined. Not always do they do that, but this one did. And then I'm going to come up and do another one. And this one just touched. I think I have a heart fetish today. If we look at this, Apicor, I did a heart. Lava, I did hearts. Mooka flower look like a heart. Hmm. I just realized that. I must have. And then we just join them, you know, with a little line. Then I can come back in here and add some more lava in there. And I can add just some uh, fescue. So I'm going to come back to my template and I'm going to draw this um, mooka flower on my template. So it's just going to nestle in And I'm going to stripe it. And when I did this one, one time I took it and I actually striped. I filled in every other 
little um, stripe in there just to give it some more um, drama because I, I really like to have um, a little drama in my tangles. I'm gonna fill that up with a little few more little lava. But you can see how that helps blend this tangle into what else I'm drawing. And um, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another apicor here just to see if I can't balance this out. And this time I am going to color those in. And that will allow me to just give, you know, some um, more room now for lava if I want. We'll see what happens here. My lava seem to be, on this one, my lava seem to be much larger than, um, than my, than I'm doing on this one. It's funny how you change when you, when you draw different things, how the size of things will change. And I'm looking at my tile to see what else I can put on here. And I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do, uh, Breach. I had to look to see what the name of it was. I, I thought, can I remember the name of that? Yeah, Breach. Um, it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful tangle. Let's see if I can find. Okay, here it is. I've done it right down here. This is Breach. This is Breach, and it's done double. And uh, on your step outs, you see how. Um, it's, it's even, she's even done a little a striping and shading it. So it, it's a, it's a, such a easy to, and it's not a heart. So I'm going to go off my heart theme. So I'm just going to add a, this shape. So it's, it's a pointy, a pointed on either end. So I have a a leaf shape that has points on both ends of it. And then you can go on either the left side or the right side. I tend to always go from the left and then come down to that center. It just seems that's just what's natural for me, but you can do either side. And then we're going to aura the inside of this. And then we're gonna make the top of it kind of heavy so it this this gives you the the impression that it's got a little hollow maybe it's a the you know the inner core of something just got a hollow space and then we're going to come back and stripe and I find that I like to give my stripes just a little C curve as they come down it helps round out that tangle and give it a more organic look so I'm going to do another one in here And this one's going to be holly bod behind, so we would think it would come down. I guess that's probably why I always do on the left, is because I tend to draw that direction. And then aura. And then stripe. And I forgot to put the little weight right there, so it looks like it has a little... Um, hollow place inside. So I'm going to actually add a few more lavas in my space here, just to kind of, you know, I don't know. Those are tiny. <laughs> I never draw tiny. 
So what I'm gonna balance it out, I'm gonna put a breach over here also. I don't think things always need to be balanced, but today they, they're getting balanced. So if I were to do it on my template, I would And I think on the template, it needs to have a little bit. So I'm just going to thicken up. I'm going to go back over those lines and weight them just to give a little bit more weight in, in that particular tangle. So you can see how that changes if you if you give it a little bit more you know weight in there and again mine are going to it's going to um, kind of overlap or under and I think I'll go and to keep consistency I'm going to go back and I'm going to just make these just a little weighted So that we have a little weight and now if i were doing on the when i do on the template i'm gonna i will sometimes just like it this had this line that just kept going so i just made it into you know a vine a mucha vine and where i might even just continue to add um alternate just the tangles that i've done just to give it some balance out there and I love the fact that we have a little white air space up in here and it's not, you know, all the way tangled up in there because it gives us some opportunity to shade or to add something, you know, different. I might leave this one to just see what what happens um, on my next. But the next one I'm going to teach, I'm going to do um, right at the bottom of my template in this space. I did it in the book. I just did it underneath the um, the same. And on my first one, I did it underneath. This one's called organic. And I, I really like this tangle. I'm gonna come out a little bit with my camera so you can see. But I do it opposite of what, um, and I'm looking at who, I should print those bigger so I can read it. Well, I can't read her name. It's too small for me to read <laughs> on my template. Um, but I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. She starts at the bottom and works her way towards the top. So if you were doing it on a, um, I'm gonna get a just, I'm gonna just get out a bookmark here and I'm gonna just do a practice on a little bookmark so you can see what I'm talking about. But we're going to make a, I'm gonna make a kind of a cane shape. So if you think of it as just a, um, a hook shape, and then we're going to come back at the tail of the hook and add, add another hook. But this one's embedded in. And then I rotate and come back. Now, sometimes I don't get mine all the way met, so I will go back and meet them. But I want to start right on that line and then come. And mine sometimes get a little Bit, they're not perfectly straight. They sometimes have a little bend in the staff part of the hook. And I just alternate. Back and forth. You can see that one right there didn't come, but don't worry about it. It's going to, it will. And I can just go this direction so much easier then I can go 
starting at the bottom. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna turn my bookmark over and I'm gonna start at the bottom and see if I can do it going backwards. No, it doesn't flow as well for me going backwards, coming from the bottom up. When I do it coming from the top down, the flow is just so much easier. So I'm gonna do it on my, on my template and I'm not gonna draw a line or anything. I'm just going to start with my hook shape which has a little, you can see it's kind of got a little dip to it. That just happens to be what I do. It, it can be very straight if you want it to be. This is just the first step. So I'm just going to go along here, back and forth. until I reach a point that I, you know, oh, I think that, that I've come to the end. And because I can always add more here at the end if I want them. So now I'm gonna come back up to the top and we're just going to aura that shape. And it's going to kind of step down a little. And ooh, I kind of went over my line there a little. I'm gonna color that in so. As we know, there's no mistake in Zentangle. So we're just going to step this down. And snug it in. And so when I do it, I usually put my, my tile so that it is vertical so that or my paper whatever i'm doing so that it's vertical and then i just gently move it back and forth when i so you can see that i just rotated it just a little bit And this just weaves this tangle in on itself. I just, it's just a great border tangle. Or e you can even do just one or two of them, you know, in a space. And I went over my line there. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention, I was talking. So I tried not to. And right here, you can see, I didn't draw the line all the way down. I'm gonna draw that one all the way down. And it just kind of fits right in. And there's not a set number of little um, auras or step downs that you do. It's just a matter of how much you need to fill up your space. And now I am to the last one. So I can, I'm gonna put one more here and I'm just gonna bring them all to that point so that it just kind of ends it, wraps it around and ends it. So it tucks it all in. And sometimes I will go back up here and make that have a little, you know, fescue um, little edge on it, just kind of Fescue it. But it is just a simple little chain looking tangle. Now to make this one kind of have more drama because to me it's fairly plain. Sometimes I will go in and I'm going to bring one in. I will go in and put a 
you know, a circle in there, or sometimes I fill it all the way up. You know, just blacken that whole thing. But that's a personal preference. Oh, I think she does on hers fill those in, but you can leave them. Matter of fact, I left them without anything on this particular one. I didn't fill them in because I thought I might go back and add color here. And that would be fun to add a little color in there with a jelly roll. Or on this one, because it's on a gray paper, I can take my white jelly roll and fill it in with um, the white and it just gives that just a little bit of a pop with um, on a gray paper. You get that just that little bit of just a different look when you work on a gray paper and you can come in and add with your jelly roll other other colors in there. So I also went and I like I said when I don't know if we were filming we weren't um, I do sh I did shatuck in here or as Rick calls it you think I could remember already I we just Betty and I just talked about that and Shattuck, thank you, Betty. <laughs> Shattuck, Rick calls it Shattuck, and I've got to get that in my mind because they are the designers of that tangle. If you, you know, and I, it's a great fill-in tangle. But when I did it in my book, I just colored it in with my happy with colored pencils because I thought to myself, well, maybe I, you know, maybe I want to do a color. I, but I had a gray pencil in my hand, and so I just colored it in. But to shade, um, to shade this one uh, in my book, I haven't even shaded it yet. I'm going to take just my graphite pencil and I'm going to just shade, put a little graphite right where those meet. And sometimes that helps if you've got your lines don't quite meet or if you, you know, you've, you don't like how it looks. Putting that little bit of graphite in there will um, just camouflage, you know, a stroke. Or, and I, I don't think a tingle is finished until you have shaded it. It just, right here you can, I had some lines that were kind of overlapping, but into my other, I didn't, I wasn't careful. But then I'll come back and just blend this using that side of your um, shading stump. And I know they have a French name, but I, I stumble all over saying tortillon. I don't think I said it right. But so I call it tortillon. shading tortillon. That's it. I, I just stumble all over saying tortillon. I don't know why. So I just color the shading stamp and it works but you can see that adding that little bit of shading really enhances that little tangle so I always feel like my my work is never really done until I've shaded and I I really like the shading part because then it tells me Hmm, do I need to go back and add more things to it? Which I might even just come in here and just shade instead of coloring those in, just give those little, um, that little rounded part on there, just a little graphite. And just blend them a little, leaving a little white because I'm a firm believer that you don't want them to look, you want that contrast of dark and your black pen, light for your paper, and that gray for your, you know, that medium color. So you have a light, a 
dark and a medium and th that's more pleasing to the eye inside of um breach i would i will add a little color in here because wherever you add dark it's going to sink that tangle to the background so it's going to make this look like it's even more hollow it's going to take it further back the darker it is the further back your eye takes the drawing and sometimes i won't even add any i just take my shading stump and i'll tell you shading stumps will get loaded with graphite and they tend to just slip on your paper instead of smearing it around so cleaning that off with an emery board just cleaning off that excess graphite it kind of sharpens down that but it does a twofold thing it helps smear the graphite just a little bit better because graphite is a lubricant in a sense it 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 makes things i mean if you want to can't get into your a car you can take a graphite pencil and rub it on your key or and well, we probably don't all have key locks anymore or they're all remote but I used to rub graphite on a key and it would help it go in the lock if you have a key that won't fit in a lock you can rub a little graphite on it so I'm just going to put a little graphite that's why I clean off my shading stump every once in a while just to make sure that it it smears the graphite well so I'm going to come back to this one that I was adding color to, just using my jelly roll. So I'm going to come back up in here and just easily add because I have um, just, I can just add a little white in here to make these kind of lift off the page. And we had 90 degree weather last week and 44 degree weather this morning. So it's, we've had the whole gambit. Matter of fact, I was cold this morning. I said, I need summer back. So we, um, and why I said that is sometimes your jelly rolls do not work well in cold weather. The ink, I think, gels up so i will warm the jelly roll up i i put it uh wrapped it in a a rice bag that i've warmed in my microwave or i've held it in my hands or in class we i've even sat on them to you know to kind of body heat when to warm them up and they work much better when they're warmed up um the, the ink just tends to flow a little bit better when they, and I don't know if other people in colder climates have that problem, but I have it with mine. I just find that it just doesn't want to, um, doesn't want to roll. So I think we've covered all the tangles on our list and, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish drawing down here. I would add, I would, like I did here, you can see I added um, the tangle, the other tangles that we're doing. I had Lava and Breach and Mucha Flower uh, in here. Oh, it, there is Apicor. And I even added a little uh, one from a couple of weeks ago. I, I always like to add some little vines it's just something i do i i i love the organic stuff so everything i have ends up with some kind of little vine somewhere in it we all have a trademark i think when you look at somebody you can tell whose work it is because you end up doing you know you put your little own twist to it so i encourage you to you know if you've got a tangle you love to put in every things you you put it in all your work I used to read books to children in the library and one of the authors and I wish I could remember who it was always drew a spider like down in one corner of his books and we would when we do story time we would 
I would always have the kids look for this spider. And um, so, you know, it's kind of fun when you, and you'll see artists, they'll, they even sign their work in a unique way. Their chalk is a, um, a, a little different. So if you did print this off, you can see that these were not finished. So I would go in and finish off that just because that was the edge of the paper and um, when that's just kind of how the the template ended up so you want to finish those off or add your own whatever you want to do with it so any questions today yeah we'll, we'll unmute and we'll see where people are from the, today so my husband unmuted everyone can yeah. you show us your finished one again? Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, we can still record. There's the one in the book that I did. And there's this one that still doesn't have the happy finished. I will finish doing a Shattuck. I remembered. <laughs> Shattuck on it. Um, finish it off with Shattuck. And you can see I did a little lava in the words you can you know yeah, you put a you can extend it up i didn't on this one but here i just the oh a little lava could be growing out of that happy so you know you can really add it and make it your your own this one still needs more shading i haven't shaded this but i i've done a little shading on on this one so and i'm gonna have my husband stop the recording